Welcome everybody on the auspicious occasion of Guru Purnima Arts from India is going to organize an international dance concert. Arts from India is an aficionado of all kinds of art forms throughout the world and it is an initiative by Ajay V. Chapotkar and he has taken up the, the crucial responsibility of promoting various kinds of arts and young artists all around the world down time. So this is uh, the pandemic situation and we're all stuck up. And so we've come with an online version of the dance recital concert. And these are a series of interviews and interactions between some of the best exponents of the particular dance form and the performer who will be actually performing the dance form. This is done with an idea to promote and let us know a bit more about the particular form so that we feel more interested and eagerly wait for the performance on the particular day. So today we have uh, a very beautiful interaction in uh, Manipuri dance style. We know Manipuri uh, dance style is obviously hailing from Manipur in the northeastern part of the country. But Manipuri as a style of dance has been famous all around the world by very famous exponents. Today we are very proud and privileged to have Madam Poshali Chatterjee, who is one of the most well-known Manipuri dancers in India. She has established herself as a performer, teacher, and choreographer in this field. She's well versed in all aspects of Manipuri dance, like Lai Harauba, Rasa Leela, Sholom, Pung, playing. Pung is basically an instrument, and Thangta, the martial arts of Manipur. She received her training from the legendary guru Vipin Singh, as well as Darshana Jhaveri and Kalavati Devi. She has trained in Thangta under Oja, Ranjit Chingtham, and traditional Manipuri folk dance from Oja Amusana Devi. Since 1996, she runs her own institution, Nandonik Movement Arts in Kolkata, West Bengal, India, where she has trained many dancers who has established artists now. She has traveled the world with the dance form. She had performed in very prestigious festivals of Kajuraho, Konarak, Ganga, Nishagandhi, Surya, and also traveled to other parts of the world like Canada, USA, Indonesia, Singapore, Mexico, and I am out of my breath talking all about her achievements. We will be very grateful uh, to have her amongst us. And the one performing on the day and also interacting with Madam is Mr. Shubhadeep Sharkar. Shubhadeep Sharkar started his journey with Bharat Natyam at the age of 10. And he's born, grown and brought up in a middle class family of Bengal. And then in his course of study, he was under the guidance of... Uh, Guru Hemant Kumar Yakom and Dr. Shruti Bandhubadhyay, under their guidance, he learned theoretical and practical aspects of Manipuri. He is blessed to come across eminent gurus of Manipuri dance like Srimati Kalavati Devi, Srimati Devya Chal Devjani Chaliha, Srimati Ilya Basu, etc., in his life as a dancer. He has been awarded many awards like Anupama Award from the Governor of West Bengal. So he is currently pursuing a PhD under the training of Poshali Madam, Poshali Chatterjee, in Manipuri dance form. So that's all that I have to say about these two very important persons of the of the field. And I now will uh, wait with, you know, thumping hearts and know about Manipuri more from Madam Poshali Chatterjee and Shubhadeep Sarkar. Thank you. So thank you, Rudraru. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm really happy to be part of this uh, very noble initiative by Arts from India. Uh, they are organizing this uh, Yuba Nritya Utsa for male dancers, upcoming male dancers. It's a very good initiative because dancers need this platform. Uh, I'll 
talk a little bit about uh, Manipuri, the history, uh, as well as some um, the characteristics of Manipuri dance. Uh, Manipuri, very interestingly, is one of the oldest and one of the youngest uh, dance forms, classical dance forms of India. Uh, it comes from a 2000 year old tradition when Manipur had the indigenous dance forms like Lai Haraba, Mai Bijagoi, etc. Even Thangta, the martial arts, uh, is a very old uh, ritualistic form which was, uh, you know, um, kind of nurtured by the kings of Manipur. However, the uh, what we know as classical Manipuri dance, the classical forms of Manipuri dance have been introduced uh, in Manipur in the 18th century uh, by Maharaja Bhagya Chandra. He is uh, almost like a mythical figure in Manipur uh, because he uh, introduced Vaishnavism, Gaudiya Vaishnavism in, uh, in Manipur. Uh, so the uh, you know the uh, sankirtan etc uh, went from bengal to manipur and uh, in collaboration with the gurus of manipur who were well versed in the uh, indigenous dance forms uh, this beautiful dance form of uh, manipuri as a classical dance form was developed the literature etc was uh, referred to was the bhagavad gita the vaishnavite shastras etc so we see a lot of the uh, vaishnavite poets like uh, Vijay Dev, uh, Kavi Vidyapati, all of their uh, compositions being sung in Manipur. Uh, and uh, also side by side, we have the movements which have come from uh, from the indigenous dance forms and they have been incorporated into the classical form. So essentially the two very highly developed classical forms of Manipuri dance are Ras Leela, which uh, most people would have heard of. There are five main Ras Leelas in Manipur and these Ras Leelas are performed primarily at the temples. Uh, the main temple in Manipur is the Govindaji temple in Imphal and it is performed there in the temple courtyard, uh, what we call the Mandok uh, and uh, every temple and every household almost in Manipur has a mandu. And um, uh, the other form is uh, Sankirtan, which is Sankirtan is like, uh, as the word says, it is a, it is a kirtan, it is a, it is what is called Natpala. And uh, it is uh, it is a very sacred and ritualistic form. There are uh, very stringent rules of, uh, you know, how to perform it. And uh, once again, uh, the uh, the shastras, the version of shastras, are uh, used in the songs and the performances. And uh, one very interesting thing about Manipuri dance is that it is not really a. Uh, uh, you know, something that we present on stage for the pleasure of uh, the audience. It is actually um, a, a sort of um, offering to gods. So even now in Manipur, uh, the Ras Leelas and uh, Sankirtan, these are performed not only in the... Uh, Ras Leela, of course, is performed in the temples and sometimes in other, um, other uh, locations. Sankirtan is performed everywhere and uh, it is part and parcel of everyday life of Manipur. So right from the time uh, when uh, you get married, uh, to when you uh, have a child, uh, the you know the uh, first rice eating ceremony, the uh, karna bheda, then uh, even the you know the shad ceremony, everything has to be accompanied by sankirtan. So, uh, dance and music is not just uh, an art form in Manipur; it is actually part and parcel of uh, everyday life. It is a very devotional dance form. Uh, even the pung, uh, I think Rudra Rupa was talking about playing of the pung is the Manipuri, uh, the drum, the main percussion instrument that we use. There are many other instruments, but this is the main one which accompanies our dance uh, recitals. Uh, even the Pung is, uh, you know, considered a representation of Lord Krishna and Radha. So the right side, which is the treble sound is uh, Radha. It is more feminine. And the left side, which is the bass, uh, that is um, uh, considered to be Lord Krishna. And it is considered to be a very sacred instrument. So uh, everything is devotional. So uh, and and that is how it is. Uh, it has been um, kind of performed and developed in Manipur. About sixty to sixty five years back, uh, this very ritualistic form, which was in the temples, was brought to the proscenium stage by gurus of Manipur, like uh, Guru Amubi Singh, uh, who worked with Uday Shankar, then Guru Bipin Singh, who worked with Madam Menka, and the Javeri sisters, and other gurus like Kalavati Devi, Guru Dev Jani Chaliha, and uh, many other gurus who have uh, taken this form and uh, they've performed it uh, outside. Uh, the Ras Leelas, of course, are very long, even the Sankirtan, they are ritualistic, right? So they go 
on for a, it may go on for five hours, six hours, sometimes all through the night. Uh, but we, to present it on this stage, the what the gurus did was that they actually took uh, the uh, compositions within the Ras Leelas and uh, they uh, made them into uh, individual compositions. So actually what Shubhudip will perform today is one such composition. We'll talk more about it, but it it uh, originated in the Ras Leela. It is still performed in the Ras Leela, but here he will be performing it as a solo recital. So uh, that is a little bit about uh, Manipuri dance. The other part I would uh, also like to say is that uh, it has got a very rich, uh, you know, uh, Tala system, uh, which is a combination of the indigenous Tala system as well as um, uh, what we find in Padavali Kirtan. And there are uh, many, many uh, Talas ranging from one beat to 64 beats and very complicated rhythm patterns. And there are also many composi compositions which are called Tal Prabandhas which are, uh, you know, combination of different talas. So in one composition, you will have several talas being used and uh, very intricate and very beautiful compositions have been made by the gurus. So we will now start with a little demonstration. So Shubhadip will uh, show you a few very uh, typical aspects of Manipuri dance so that we understand, uh, you know, some of the uh, basic um, nuances of this dance style. So first and foremost, uh, the way we stand in Manipuri dance, the classical form uh, and the Ras Leela form, uh, our feet are usually together and uh, our knees are also uh, well put together. So Shubhadeep, if you can just uh, do some movement with your knees together. Just you can show uh, our audience today. Yes, as you can see, the knees do not go, uh, you know, they do not go far apart. Uh, the other part also what uh, Shubhadeep can show is that uh, the hand movements, uh, the hand movements are usually rounded. So they are all rounded hand movements. Shubhadeep, if you can show. And they are also performed at a 40, 45 degree angle. Yes, Shubhadeep, can you show the rounded <laughs> And uh, as you would also have seen or, uh, uh, you know, already kind of um, observed that this dance form is a very, uh, it, it is very graceful and it is very controlled. Uh, and it is related to what I was saying earlier that it is an offering to the God. So there is nothing very, uh, you know, bold or overly stated. It is very humble. It is very submissive. So, uh, Shubhadeep, if you continue doing the movement, just do some simple movement. So, whatever we do, you know, we never put our head up like this or even our uh, torso is never uh, stiff like this. It is all, uh, there's always a sense of submission in the way that we perform the dance. So, that is that is one of the main things in Manipuri dance, that you have to always be conscious that it is an offering to the God and it is not something where you are displaying your, uh, you know, your skills. Of course, you're displaying your skills, but it has to be done in that respectful manner. Uh, I, and let me talk about the Abhinaya part of it, because in any dance form, there is there are uh, three aspects of a dance form. One is the pure dance, which is called Nitta. Uh, another is the dance which is expressive or uh, descriptive which is called Ritya and the next is Natya which is Abhinay and uh, in Manipuri dance as with everything else uh, uh, our Abhinaya is also very controlled and it is uh, it is done with uh, you know very minimum uh, overt uh, uh, expressions uh, of the face it is kept natural uh, and, and the reason is the same that, uh, you know, Bhakti Ras is the main Ras that we follow in uh, Manipur. And even if it is a uh, it is a, um, a demonstration of anger or grief or anything, it is kept very, um, very controlled. Uh, the other thing is that out of the different types of Abhinaya that we have in classical forms, uh, the uh, Aharya Abhinaya, which is basically, you know, Abhinaya through your uh, through the costume that you wear. Uh, just as I was saying earlier, that if I'm if I'm playing the role of Krishna, I have to wear a certain costume. Uh, 
uh, even if I'm playing the role of Balaram, which is again a male uh, character, I have to change my costume. Krishna Dhoti is yellow, Balaram Dhoti is green. And then if I'm playing uh, Radha in, uh, in Ras Lila, I will wear a green kumin. And uh, if I'm playing a gopi, I'll, I will uh, wear a red kumin. So through uh, through um, the costume, the Abhinaya is done. And also, you know, Angik and Vachik, uh, uh, Satvik, all types of Abhinaya is uh, there in uh, Manipuri dance. I will show you uh, just a little bit of um, a piece from just, just the expression, not the dance, uh, uh, from uh, Khandita, which is uh, part of Jaydev's Geet Govinda. And uh, how, uh, you know, in Manipuri, how we will um, actually uh, show that Khandita story. Many of you may know that Radha has waited uh, at the appointed place uh, in the uh, in um, in the jungle uh, for Krishna. And Krishna has not come all through the night. She has decorated her bower. And uh, when Krishna comes, he, uh, he shows telltale signs of uh, having spent the night with another woman. And Radha is very angry and uh, she tells him to go away. She tells him that, uh, uh, go away, Krishna, I'm not going to talk to you. So that is the story of uh, Khandita. And I will just show a little bit. And I hope that after that, Shubhadeep will be able to show us a little bit of Lasse Chali and Tandav Chali as planned. So this is how um, uh, Khandita will be uh, uh, is performed. The composition is by Guru Bipin Singh, my Guruji. So I'll just show a little bit just sitting out here. <clears throat> Rajani Janita Guru Jagar Raga Raga Kashaitam Alasani Besham Alasani Besham Bahati Nayana Manu Raga Mibas Futamudita Rasabi Nivesham Hari Hari Yahi Madhava Hari Hari Yahi Madhava Yahi Keshava so this is a very small description and this is how it is done in Manipur also where uh, you know um, uh, the female dancers will actually sing and uh, and and do the Abhinaya. I, can I ask one question? Yes, sure. That is when, uh, as a state or as a, as a sister states, Manipur and all the northeastern part of India is often taken as excluded from the mainland Indian territory, as is the southern India, because the Indian constitution and the Indian visualization of art forms have been presently from the northern part of the of the country. So uh, is Manipuri dance form have any kind of similarities with the other classical dance forms or how is it different? Yes, uh, that's a very good question, actually. And you're right that, um, you know, traditionally or politically, whichever way you say, the Northeast has been uh, and, and uh, you know, geographically also it is very remote. Uh, but, um, you know, this, there are similarities and there are differences, right? Uh, and uh, similarity, I would say, uh, is there in the literature that is used because this just now what I did, the Yahi Madhava, Ratini Janita Guru, mm -hmm. this is done by all uh, dance styles, whether it is uh, maybe not in Kathak, but uh, all other dance styles, yeah. uh, they follow the same literature, right? So the literature is same uh, because uh, of the, uh, you know, Vaishnavite uh, influence. So that is same. And, um, uh, you know, there are certain uh, similarities also in terms of uh, movements, the gracefulness, wrist movement that you will see in, uh, and, uh, you know, the gracefulness of the whole uh, uh, dance form with uh, Eastern Indian dance styles. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you delve a little deeper, there are uh, certain similarities that you will find with, um, uh, you know, with uh, South Indian forms. Uh, there are some talas, etc., which may be similar. There are many theories about this uh, because Indian classical dance is mainly uh, supposed to be based on Bharata's Natya Shastra. And uh, it is said that when the Persian attack happened, uh, the Brahmins, they took the Natya Shastra and they fled from North India. And they, they fled to two places. One is to South India, which is why you find uh, the Natya Shastra being so well followed in the South Indian forms. And there is a theory. We don't know. It is not proven. There is a theory that another group of people, they went to uh, Northeast India and Southeast Asia. 
So you'll find that uh, the Balinese dance, the Thai dances, etc., they are also very similar to Manipuri. And if you dive deep into the Natya Shastra, many of the movements and many of the systems that are mentioned over there, they seem to be reflected in uh, Manipuri, in uh, Balinese dance, etc. So that way it is all uh, kind of uh, interwoven. But yes, there is also a very strong uh, indigenous form, uh, which is the Lai Haraba, uh, which actually... Um, you know, describes the primitive concept of cosmology, creation of the universe, creation of the body, creation of the house and uh, all that. So that is something which is very uh, typical to Manipur. And those uh, those uh, movements have been incorporated into the classical form also. And in this, in this regard, I also have observed, I may be wrong, but I have just observed as a lay person, that especially dances like Kathak and Manipuri, they lack the elaborate mudra system which is present in Kathakali, Odissi, Moinyatyam. I have observed a similarity of that the graceful round movement that you we are talking about, but they're not following that mudra system. So would you just comment on this about the Adabinaya part and the mudra? Yes, it may not be very apparent, uh, Ruduru, but actually um, there are two mudra systems that we follow. One is the uh, one that is uh, described by, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the Shastras uh, that are followed by the other North Indian dance styles like uh, uh, Abhinay Darpan, etc. Uh, the same yeah. Pataka, Pataka, etc. we do. But uh, even before that in uh, Lai Haraba, there are many, many hand uh, movements. So just like I said, now the creation of the universe, so when the Maibi dance is happening, they show each part like, you know, the head, the nose, the eyes, and everything is done through mudras. So uh, there are a lot of, and it is called Kutlon and Kuttek over there. Uh, it is uh, another parallel thing that uh, was already present there. But with the advent of Vaishnavism, it is shown. But it is not very overt. Like, you know, I mentioned, right, that we do not do very bold like yeah. this. Like, yeah. you know, we'll do this, but we'll do it in a very soft way. Because it is considered that, you know, if I do it like that, I'm like very in your face. So Manipuri dance is not in your face. It is very controlled. So we have to learn that control also in order to become and, and that is why it looks very simple but i'm sure shubhadeep will say uh, it is very difficult to learn it looks extremely simple but when you try to yes. learn and when you try to teach both are very difficult i just share uh, shubhadeep is having some problems with his network okay so i'm taking the opportunity like you know a very greedy person no, because no, i'm so okay. yeah ma'am what i have observed in uh, in heisnam kanahilal's theater he had mentioned that the the pattern of the rivers and the pattern in which Manipuri lifestyle goes, the dance is inherent with that. So, uh, because I, residing in Bengal and you too, we miss our classical forms, our classical traditions, which of course, uh, there are certain, uh, you know, what people are doing them, but we miss the classical tradition. So, would you talk about the culture of Manipur and how probably Manipuri dance form has imbibed the culture. How did it become? Yes, in fact, uh, you know, um, I think more than any other dance style to understand Manipuri dance, you have to understand the culture of Manipur. And uh, for that, uh, one has to visit Manipur to believe really how they are preserving the culture. Like I said, that it is part of your day to day day-to-day -day life it is not something you do on a saturday evening you go to a theater and you watch dance it is not like that okay uh, it is something which happens almost every day now almost every person in manipur will participate in say lai Haraba. if you go during lai Haraba in may from 6 to 60 everyone is participating and they are not trained dancers right they are not trained dancers but they are participating same with Ras Leela also, what happens is that, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, say, uh, the way you ask for a mannat, right, to God, uh, say that, okay, I'm going through some trouble, and uh, you save me from this trouble, I'll give something to you. So in Manipur, giving something is, I will make my uh, daughter Krishna in the Ras Leela. Which means that, you know, there will be some, obviously, some donation, etc. Plus, the child will come and play Krishna. So that is an offering. 
so that is how uh, deeply ingrained it is into their lives every day in the morning uh, govinda ji temple there is uh, aarti is done along with the playing of the pung everyone goes there there is uh, you know there is a ritual that everyone follow there is pung there is singing uh, and and it is really part of every festival man uh, like we say that you know in bengal we have 13 festivals in 12 months manipur must be having 26 festivals in 12 months because okay. there okay. is everything is like uh, if you go during holi something is happening everywhere just not the temples every almost second house will have a mandap and there will be a holi pala happening nupa pala nupi pala nupa pala is like the nupa is uh, male so uh, men's pala um, Uh, then women's pala then now ratha yatra will come during ratha yatra there will be several things like uh, uh, something called joy dev joy dev is basically uh, uh, singing of uh, the, the, the joy dev's geet govinda dashavatar etc and every like julan yatra janmashtami and you just name it and it is all all celebrated with uh, song and dance and the entire community is part of it so that is what is very very significant and um, uh, and and even in raslila you know the uh, the uh, the people who perform most of them except for maybe the main sakhi etc none of them are trained dancers they just come and they learn and they follow so that is it, it's something that one has to experience in order to understand uh, i i won't be able to explain in a uh, discussion like this i'm trying we uh, the little bit that i can explain no ma'am it is it is really interesting that Uh, how art and culture and society it gets mingled so it's not only art for art's sake no it is not it is not not at all and and you have to give it that respect you have to mm-hmm. understand mm-hmm. that like for especially for us who uh, you know go from outside of manipur we have to understand that not just take it as an art form but understand that what are the socio cultural religious uh, you know thought process behind it and that is a sensitive area and we have to be very sensitive about it because just imagine like uh, we are bengalis right anybody from yes, outside ma'am. who comes and sings a robindra songit we have 30000 comments on it right yes absolutely so, <laughs> it's, it's similar to them that uh, yes. if so if we go and we wear our costume uh, in the way that it is not appropriate or we do not mm-hmm. do the dance uh, properly uh, it it hurts sentiments because it is uh, very close to their day to day life right Yes. Yeah, and the last question that I would like to ask, I don't know if Shubhodi Bhai is at all connected. That is, if you can talk of what is the uh, what is the condition of Manipuri dance now uh, in Manipur and outside? Are the young people interested, or what is the condition of the dance? See, in Manipur, like I said, that um, the uh, the way that we go to a uh, school and learn formally, formally it is there. But other than that, also people. Uh, participate in uh, you know uh, the um, uh, as a, as a social function right so um, that way it is uh, very good people are learning in fact uh, uh, you know there is a lot of uh, opportunity to go and perform so if you are a pung player you will be so busy because every day there is a sankirtan somewhere or the other right so you are very busy and it is a form of livelihood also so it is um, it is thriving over there Uh, outside i would say that uh, in calcutta definitely there are many schools uh, and uh, i won't say there are lots and lots of students because like i said that manipuri is a lit- it's not as well known as the other dance forms and it's difficult to learn but there is a lot of interest in uh, calcutta and uh, there is also a very strong uh, manipuri dance community in bangladesh because uh, there are a lot of manipuris in bangladesh plus uh, uh guru kalavati devi sister shantibala devi she used to live in bangladesh and she had trained a lot of uh, dancers in manipuri there plus uh, in bombay uh, my current guru guru dashna javeri she is in bombay the javeri sisters uh, in bombay in delhi guru singh ajit singh is there so uh, in pockets i would say uh, there are uh, lots of people who are teaching manipuri and uh, abroad also in usa uk people are teaching Uh, but i would personally like to see more people learning and more people popularizing this form because it is a very beautiful form difficult to learn like i said and maybe that is why uh, we don't have as many students as as uh, other dance forms but yes there is a fair amount of interest in it 
first question I will ask you is that um, how did you how did you start learning Manipuri dance? What was your experience of uh, learning Manipuri dance? If you can tell us about that. Uh, pranam, my Guruji, and uh, thank you, uh, Ajay Virji. Uh, Ami uh, prothom Manipuri uh, dritto ke uh, shamne theke dekhi uh, Guru Jitin Singh er madhome. Guru Jitin Singh amader uh, birhumer ekti chotto shahor shiuri te ashen ekti nritter kormo shalar ayojon kora hoye chilo shikhane oni prosikha kishabe ashen. তো ওনার কাছে প্রথম আমি মণিপুরি নৃত্যের তালিম পেয়েছিলাম ওই কর্মশালার মাধ্যমে তারপর আমি গুরু জিতেন সিং এর কাছে জানতে পারি যে বিশ্বভারতী বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ে মণিপুরি নৃত্য নিয়ে পড়াশোনা করার সুযোগ রয়েছে তো তারপর আমি নিজের বাড়িতে একটু পড়াশোনা শুরু করি যে মণিপুরি নৃত্য কিভাবে শান্তিনিকেতনে আসে কিভাবে গুরুদেব মণিপুরি নৃত্যকে শান্তিনিকেতনে প্রতিষ্ঠা করেন এবং শিক্ষার একটি অঙ্গ হিসেবে উনি এখানে পাঠ্যক্রমে ভুক্ত করেন মণিপুরি নৃত্যকে তো সেই সব পড়ার পরে আমার মধ্যে একটা অদ্ভুত উৎসাহ এবং অদ্ভুত একটা অনুভূত অনুভব আমি অনুভূতির মাধ্যমে সেটা পেলাম যেটা আমি গুরু জিতেন সিং এবং তার পরবর্তীকালে গুরু হেমন্ত কুমার ওয়াইকাম এনাদের কাছ থেকে আমি পেয়েছি আমি ওখানে ভর্তি হলাম বিএমইউস কমপ্লিট করলাম বিএমইউস এর পরে এমইউস করলাম এবং এই বিএমইউস এবং এমইউস এর পাঠ্যক্রমের যারা আমাকে শিখিয়েছেন যে গুরুদের আমি পেয়েছি তারা হলেন গুরু হেমন্ত কুমার ওয়াইকাম গুরু সুনীতা দেবী গুরু গুরু সুমিত বসু এবং অবশ্যই গুরু প্রফেসর শ্রুতি বন্দ্যোপাধ্যায় তাদের প্রত্যেককে আমি পেয়েছি তাদের অবদান অনস্বীকার্য আমার জীবনে এবং তারপর আমি এম ফিল কমপ্লিট করি বিশ্বভারতী বিশ্ববিদ্যালয় থেকে এম ফিল কমপ্লিট করার পর আমি এখন বর্তমানে রবীন্দ্র ভারতী বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ে মণিপুরি নৃত্য নিয়ে গবেষণা করছি আর এইভাবেই এর মাঝখানে আমি আরও অনেক বিশেষ গুরুদের পেয়েছি যেমন গুরু কালাবতী দেবী গুরু দেবযানী জাহলিয়া গুরু লাইলি বাসু এনাদের সান্নিধ্য আমি পেয়েছি ফলে মণিপুরি নৃত্যের যে একটা নির্যাস যে সৌন্দর্য দর্শন সেগুলো আমি অনেকটাই অনুভব করতে পেরেছি এসব গুরুদের সান্নিধ্যে এসে শুভদীপ সরকার হি টক আবাউট হিজ জার্নি ইন মণিপুরি ডান্স হাউ হিউ হ্যাড বিন অ্যাট্রাক্টেড টু ইট অ্যান্ড হি অলসো মেনশন দ্যাট টগোর রবীন্দ্রনাথ টগোর দ্য পোয়েট অফ বেঙ্গল অ্যান্ড দ্য ওয়ার্ল্ড হি হ্যাড বিন অ্যাট্রাক্টেড টু মণিপুরি ডান্স ফর্ম অ্যান্ড হি হ্যাড ব্রট আ পার্ট অফ ইট আস্ক হিজ স্টুডেন্টস টু প্র্যাকটিস ইট অ্যান্ড দেয়ার অন দ্য শান্তিনিকেতন বিশ্বভারতী হ্যাড অলসো স্টার্ট দ্য কোর্স অ্যান্ড শুভদীপ দা হ্যাড টক অ্যাবাউট হিজ গুরুজ আই এম নট নেমিং অল অফ দেম বিকজ দে আর সো রিনাউন পার্সন অ্যান্ড হি হ্যাড ডান হিজ বি নিউজ অ্যান্ড এম নিউজ ফ্রম বিশ্বভারতী বিশ্ববিদ্যালয় দ্যার ইজ ইউনিভার্সিটি ইন ইন ওয়েস্ট বেঙ্গল and then now he has also done mphil and he has he is uh, uh, doing phd in rabindra bharati university under dr poushali chatterji and he is enthralled by the uh, the episodes of the dance form and the nuances of the dance form and he would love to uh, delve deeper every day and practice better so the next question shubhodeep uh, can you tell us about the dance or the composition that you will be performing today je nritter ongsho ti ami perform korbo sheti bosonto rasher ekti ongsho je ti amra prottekei jani je monipure panch ti ras ache পাঁচটি রাসের মধ্যে বসন্ত রাস একটি অন্যতম রাস যেটি বসন্তকালের হয়ে থাকে অনুষ্ঠিত ফাল্গুন পূর্ণিমাতে এবং প্রত্যেকটা রাসের নির্দিষ্ট একটি ক্রম পর্যায় আছে সেই ক্রম পর্যায় অনুযায়ী বসন্ত রাসের প্রথম ফার্স্ট পার্ট হচ্ছে কৃষ্ণ অভিসার যেটি কম্পোজিশন করেছেন নৃত্য পরিকল্পনা করেছেন গুরু আমি সিং এবং এখানে রয়েছে তাঞ্চাপ আট মাত্রার একটি তাল এবং মেন খুব ছয় মাত্রার একটি তাল এই টোটাল নৃত্যের অংশটি তাণ্ডবাঙ্গিকে অনুষ্ঠিত হয়ে থাকে 
এবং মণিপুরের প্রথা অনুযায়ী কৃষ্ণ অভিসার তারপর রাধা অভিসার তারপর কুঞ্জে গোপীদের আগমন এবং তারপরে আবির খেলা এইভাবে বসন্ত রাশির সমাপ্তিকরণ হয় তো আমি যেহেতু সোলো একটি একক নৃত্যের একটি অংশ আমি পারফর্ম করব সেজন্য আমি প্রথম অংশটি কৃষ্ণ অভিসারটি আমি বেছে নিয়েছি যেটি টোটালি মানে সম্পূর্ণভাবে কৃষ্ণের আহার্য পরিহিত একটি অংশ সেটি কম্পোজিশন করেছেন গুরু আমি সিং এবং আমি শিখেছি আমার বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ে পড়াশোনা চলাকালীন আমার গুরু হেমন্ত কুমার ওয়াইকামের কাছ থেকে ওকে সো সুবদীপ সরকার উইল পারফর্মিং আ পার্ট অফ বসন্ত রাসা ইজ ইটস কোল্ড দা কৃষ্ণ অভিসারা বসন্ত রাসা ইজ আ পার্ট অফ আ ট্র্যাডিশন দে হ্যাভ ইন মণিপুর देयर আর মেনি রাসেস অফ হুইচ বসন্ত রাস ইজ ডান ইন বসন্ত ঋতু এন্ড ডিলস উইথ দা the tryst of uh, krishna and it talks of the shringara the love of uh, krishna and radha and it has many stages of development which starts with the tryst the journey and ends to a festival of colors so shubhadi sarkar would be performing the first part of it uh, the krishna avisara which can be performed alone in the costume of krishna so we will be watching over his performance now so um i have a couple of more uh, questions for uh, shubhadeep so shubhadeep uh, while you were learning this dance form uh, did you face any challenges that you would like to tell us uh ha uh, monipuri nritto shekhar shurur theke ekhono mane bortomane যেসব অপরচুনিটিগুলো আমি পেয়েছি সেগুলো আমি আগে বলবো মণিপুরি নৃত্য যখন আমি শিখতে শুরু করি বিশ্বভারতী বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ে তখন আমাদের থিওরি যে পার্টি ছিল সেখানে আমি বিভিন্ন অধ্যায়ে পড়েছিলাম গোবিন্দজির মন্দিরের কথা মণিপুরের ডান্স জওয়াহরলাল নেহরু ডান্স একাডেমির কথা সেগুলোর পড়াশোনার মাধ্যমে আমার মনে একটা স্বপ্ন তৈরি হয়েছিল মণিপুর রাজ্য রাজ্যকে নিয়ে একটা স্বপ্ন তৈরি হয়েছিল গোবিন্দজির টেম্পলকে নিয়ে একটা স্বপ্ন তৈরি হয়েছিল এই মণিপুরি নৃত্যটা ঠিকঠাকভাবে শেখার মাধ্যমেই পরবর্তীকালে আমি মণিপুরে যাই এবং ওখানে জওয়াহরলাল নেহরু ডান্স একাডেমিতে একটি নৃত্য উৎসবে আমি পারফর্ম করি এবং গোবিন্দজির মন্দিরে গিয়ে আমি গোবিন্দজিকে পুজো দিই তো এই যে অনুভূতিগুলো যেটা আমি বইয়ে পড়েছি সেটা আমি নিজে ওখানে গিয়ে পারফর্ম করে নিজেকে সেইভাবে যদি আমি সেইভাবে আমি দেখতে পেয়েছি তো যেটা আমি স্বপ্নে দেখেছিলাম যে মণিপুর রাজ্যটা এরকম হবে এরকম গোবিন্দজি টেম্পলটা হবে সেটা আমি সাক্ষাৎ দেখে আমার কাছে ব্যাপারটা অনেক স্পষ্ট হয়েছে তো সেটা মনে হয় এই মণিপুরি নৃত্য না শিখলে এটা বোধহয় আমি পেতাম না আর তাছাড়াও বিভিন্ন রকম গুরুদেব রবীন্দ্রনাথের যেসব নৃত্যনাট্য সেখানেও আমি অনেক নায়ক চরিত্র অভিনয় করেছি সেখানেও আমি দেখেছি অভিনয় করতে গিয়ে যে মণিপুরি গুরুদেবের গুরুদেব রবীন্দ্রনাথের নৃত্যধারায় মানে রবীন্দ্র নৃত্যে তো মণিপুরি নৃত্যের একটা প্রভাব রয়েইছে তো সেক্ষেত্রে সেক্ষেত্রে মণিপুরি নৃত্য টা আমি ঠিকঠাক করে শিখেছি বলেই বোধ হয় এই অপরচুনিটিগুলো আমি পেয়েছি এবং এখনো পাচ্ছি এবং চ্যালেঞ্জেস বলতে আমার কাছে একটা জিনিসই মনে হয় যে প্রতিকূলতা একটা জিনিসেই এসেছে সেটা হচ্ছে আমরা যখন শিখেছি তখন মণিপুরি নৃত্যটা মৈতেই ভাষায় শেখানো হয়েছে তো মৈতেই ভাষাটা আমাদের কাছে অজানা আমরা এই ভাষাটা সম্পর্কে কিছুই জানি না যখন এই মণিপুরি নৃত্যের কিছু আইটেম আমরা করতে গেছি কিছু অংশ তখন মৈতেই ভাষায় সেটা করতে হয়েছে এবং সেটা গুরুদের কাছ থেকে জাস্ট ওই আইটেমটা সম্পর্কে একটু বাংলায় সারসংক্ষেপ আমরা পেয়েছি বাট মৈতেই ভাষার যে একটা বিস্তর আলোচনা বা ব্যাখ্যা সেটা আমরা পাইনি ফলে এই নাচটা করতে গিয়ে এখানে একটু বাধাপ্রাপ্ত হই আর তাছাড়াও আমাদের সিলেবাসে পুং বাজানোর মানে মণিপুরি নৃত্যের যে প্রধান বাদ্যযন্ত্র পুং সেটার কোনো রকম কোনো পাঠক্রম ভুক্ত আমাদের ছিল না ফলে পুং বাজানোটাও একটা সমস্যা তো এই দুটোই আমার কাছে মনে হয়েছে একটু প্রতিকূলতা তবে 
এই বাধার সম্মুখীন যত হব এটা আমার ব্যক্তিগত মতামত বাধার সম্মুখীন যত হব তত মনে হয় যে লড়াই করে সেই বাধাগুলো যখন পেরিয়ে আসবো তখন আমার এক একটা করে দরজা খুলে যাবে এবং সেই দরজাগুলো যখন খুলবে তখন যে আনন্দটা আমি অনুভব করব সেটা আমার কাছে অনেক অনেক বেশি সেটা আমার অনেক বেশি প্রাপ্তি সেটা আমার অনেক বেশি উপভোগের জিনিস so uh, shubhadeep da had talked about his uh, challenges and opportunities that he've been receiving in this field he talked about how he went to manipur and uh, performed in the temple and he offered his prayers to govind ji and so the way he had learned and he practiced that created a kind of aesthetic sense of delight in him which had given him ample chances and uh, strength to continue his journey which was not so easy it was not strewn with flowers always there were some challenges especially the challenges arose from the meithi language in which the main imparting of the education was done in the university in the initial times when he was a student so that uh, language a linguistic barrier was there to understand the deeper aesthetic and linguistic understandings however he feels that as uh, challenges cannot uh, stop a barrier uh, to a man and challenges always provides a staircase to excellence so these challenges had uh, framed him better as an artist and helped him to strive more so thank you uh, rudra rup i think yes all of us face that challenge of the language and uh, this is another thing that we need to learn and uh, if we if we learn the language it becomes so much easier uh, to understand uh, my last question for shubhadeep is that shubhadeep what are your dreams uh, going forward you have uh, already completed uh, quite a bit of study and you've learned from different gurus uh, what do you want to do after this what is your dream around manipuri dance if you can tell us um amar ekta kotha mone hoy je samajer sokol bidda sokol shikkhar madhye je gyan ebong কলা বিদ্যা আমরা অর্জন করে থাকি নৃত্য সেই বিদ্যাগুলির মধ্যে একটি অন্যতম বাহুক তো শুধুমাত্র গুরুদেব যে কথাটি বলতেন গুরুদেব রবীন্দ্রনাথ যে কথাটি সব সময় বলতেন যে নৃত্য শিক্ষা মানেই শুধু নাচিয়ে তৈরি হওয়া বা নর্তক তৈরি হওয়া নয় সমাজের শান্তিময় উন্নতিকর উন্নততম যে শিক্ষা মানুষ গড়ে তোলার যে শিক্ষা সেই শিক্ষাটা বোধ হয় সংস্কৃতি ছাড়া সম্ভব নয় এবং সংস্কৃতির বাহক হচ্ছে নৃত্যকলা তো আমার মনে হয় যে মণিপুরী নৃত্যের মাধ্যমে মণিপুরী নৃত্যে যে ভক্তি রস আছে যে নিবেদন আছে সেটা একটা মানুষকে অনেক অনেক বেশি একটা উচ্চ স্তরে নিয়ে যেতে পারে আমার তো মনে হয় আমি যখন নিজে মণিপুরি ডান্স প্র্যাকটিস করি এবং যখন আমি পারফর্ম করি তখন আমার মনে হয় যেন আমি মেডিটেশন করছি কারণ এই এই না এই নৃত্যটির মধ্যে এতটাই অধ্যাত্ম চেতনা আছে এবং এতটাই ভক্তি রস আছে যে সেটা একটা মানুষের মানসিক গঠনকে তৈরি করতে অনেক সাহায্য করে এবং আমার যেটা পরবর্তীকালের মানে স্বপ্ন সেটা হচ্ছে যে মণিপুরী নৃত্যকে নিয়ে আমি বিভিন্ন যারা পরের প্রজন্ম যারা মণিপুরী নৃত্য নিয়ে কাজ করবে তাদেরকে আলোকপাত করা এবং মণিপুরী নৃত্যের একজন শিল্পী হয়ে মণিপুরী নৃত্যকে সঠিকভাবে এগিয়ে নিয়ে যাওয়া কারণ শিল্পকে এগিয়ে নিয়ে যেতে পারে শিল্পীরাই তো মণিপুরী নৃত্যকে আশ্রয় করে জীবনে বেঁচে থেকে এই নৃত্যকে বিভিন্ন গোটা বিশ্বে প্রচারের মাধ্যমেই আমি বেঁচে থাকতে চাই এটাই আমার নিবেদন and he feels that uh, the way this dance had shaped his his himself he would like to pass it on to the others and he dreams that it becomes a, a unified platform for young practitioners to come in the field and do more so i think uh, we've had for today uh, we have we have discussed a lot about manipuri dance and we really had a very enchanting uh, discussion and i really would like to thank Namaskar Madam Poushali Chatterji and Mr Shubhadeep Sarkar uh, and we look forward to uh, view his performance on the day of Guru Purnima 
and we also thank you audience from arts from india to view this uh, interaction and i hope we learned a lot and i personally have learned a lot and i thank madam once more and with due regards we end this session today watching you all on the day of guru purnima for the concert thank you